you here. What do you do to stay positive and enthusiastic in tough times? How do you keep your enthusiasm alive when you're not hitting your business goals as quickly as you'd like to? When you lose your biggest client or even when you're trying all the new marketing strategies and nothing seems to be sticking? Welcome to the Her Business Podcast. I'm Susie Daphnis, and this podcast is designed to help women business owners to grow and scale sustainable businesses without the overwhelm and the hustle. And today's episode is all about staying positive in tough times and keeping your business enthusiasm alive. Because running a business can be challenging, even under the best circumstances, but when times get tough, it can be easy to lose motivation and feel discouraged. So in this episode, we're going to explore practical strategies for maintaining that positive outlook, managing your stress, and staying inspired and motivated no matter what obstacles come your way. So whether you're a seasoned business owner or you're just starting out, these tips and techniques are going to help you stay on track and keep your enthusiasm for your business alive. Because this is such an important part of creating a sustainable business is to be able to maintain your energy, your vision, your love for the business for the long term. And when I talk about inspiration, just know that I'm not talking about that kind of inspiration that comes and goes, but I'm talking about strategies for maintaining the spirit for your business, regardless of what comes your way, regardless of good days and bad days, good years and bad years. And after 28 years in business, I've used these strategies time and time again. I use them every day to stay on track with doing what I love and fulfilling my mission which is to help as many women as possible to create sustainable businesses that last. In preparing for today's episode, like I often do, I asked our members what they do to stay in momentum and stay inspired. And today I'm going to be sharing some of their answers as well as giving you some of what's worked for me. The other thing I want to let you know is I'm coming to you from South Carolina in the United States. I got here a few days ago and I'm here attending a mastermind that I belong to that I travel to the US to attend about three times a year. And here's what I know, being around these people, my peers, like-minded business owners, that always reignites my enthusiasm. It always reignites my fire for my business. And whether I've come in after a lull or whether I've come in at the top of my game, I know that connecting with these other women and men who are also growing and scaling their businesses, who are navigating the good times and the bad times, it always lifts me up. So let's dive in. The first thing I want to talk about is mindset and attitude because both are powerful tools when it comes to staying positive in tough times. Because when our mindset is out of whack, it can really keep us stuck. But when you can maintain a positive outlook, you're more likely to find creative solutions to challenges, to stay motivated and to inspire others around you. And I want you to know that when you are lit up, when you are inspired, it has a flow on effect to your clients, to your prospects, to the people who follow you on social media, to anyone around you. And one key strategy for developing a positive mindset uh, and to not feel defeated is to practice gratitude. And I know that that can sound a little lightweight, but it really works. And when you focus on what is working, you draw more of that to you. So could you take a few minutes today to reflect on what you're grateful for? even if it's something small, like a warm cup of coffee, like the one I've got beside me right now, or a friendly conversation that you had with a peer. This can really help shift your focus away from negative thoughts and towards all the good things in life. Now, there's a wonderful book called The Gap and the Gain. And in that book, the authors talk about how so many of us focus on the gap between where we are and where we want to be, but where the power is, is in looking at the gains that we've made, looking at who we were compared to who we are now. And that puts us in the mindset to take more inspired action rather than staying stuck in the thoughts about the goals that we are yet to realize. Now, one of our members is Linda Johansson, and she shared with me that this is how she stays positive. She said, for me, it's a deep knowing that this too shall pass. The challenges don't stay forever. And she said, my predominantly positive outlook and daily gratitude practices help me in dealing with both as they usually motivate me to take action, which rightly or wrongly gives me some sense of control. And isn't that what we want? We want to feel like we have some sense of control. And that's something we always say inside of her business. What can you control? And for um, Joanna, it is knowing that she can control that every day she can reflect on what she's grateful for. And another strategy that is along this line of celebrating the gains versus the gaps is to reframe your negative thoughts. 
So when you're faced with a challenge or a setback, it's easy to focus on what's going wrong, but instead, could you reframe the situation by asking yourself, what can I learn from this? What is this situation teaching me? How can I make this situation slightly better? And this can help you focus on the solutions rather than the problems. So Naomi Gora, who's one of our newer members, she said that she asks herself, what lesson is this tough time teaching me? She said, everything's a blessing or a lesson. You also want to look in this area that we're talking about, mindset, is to surround yourself with positive influences. So really seek out friends and colleagues and mentors who inspire you and move you forward, who have a light disposition, who they don't look at the world through rose-colored glasses, but they're always looking at solution versus problem. And you want to remember that your attitude is contagious and that you're more likely to maintain a great attitude in tough times when you're around the right people. Now, Kat Madsen of Impactful Presenters, another longtime Her Business member, she has a great strategy when things feel tough and she finds herself second-guessing herself, and that is to reach into her library of testimonials and client stories to reconnect with the impact that she's made on her clients' lives. And this immediately puts her back in a powerful mindset where she can move forward from. So that is mindset. The next thing I want to talk about is self-care and stress management because stress can be such a mood killer, can't it? And I'm the first to admit that I don't always manage stress well. It can really get me down. And running a business can be stressful, especially when things are not going as you planned. And that is why it's important to prioritize self-care and stress management in whatever it looks like for you. And self-care is about taking care of yourself physically and mentally and emotionally. And stress management is all about finding healthy ways to cope with stress. And some of those strategies can include breathing or mindful meditation or physical exercise. And I know as a hopeless meditator, I go with physical exercise. And that could be just going for a walk. But you can also try writing in a journal or talking to a friend or a counselor about what's stressing you out. And remember, everyone copes with stress differently. And so it's important to find what works for you. And that's why I said I'm a hopeless meditator. I've tried it. My meditation is going for a long walk. My meditation is actually um, going for a run, right? That's what works for me. But find what it is for you. Maybe it's walking the dog. Maybe it's uh, reading a book. Maybe it's cooking. Whatever it is that relieves that stress. And when you are investing in self-care, remember you are investing in yourself, And you are the most important part of your business. So this is such an important step. Investing also in networks where others are on similar journeys with you. That is going to help you manage your stress. When you feel like you can get the support you need from others who really get what you're going through as a business owner. And investing in your education. That works for me. One of my de-stresses is when I feel stuck is to learn something new. You want to try that one? I love it. Um... One of our uh, members, Rebecca, she said that her personal routines and morning rituals let her handle whatever's going on. No matter what gets thrown at me, she said, those personal routines and morning rituals keep her centered, keep her in her power. So what could you do to introduce something to your routine to help you check in with yourself and to deal with your stress better? If stress is making you immobilized, whether it's the stress of the pressure on you or financial pressures or family pressures or whether it's just that you feel stuck in trying to do something in your business, what could immobilize you? How could you invest in yourself and take care of yourself to better manage that stress? The third point I want to talk about is adaptability and resilience. And as business owners, we have kind of what I call a grit chip that's g-r-i-t we kind of have a built-in resilience if we're going to make it in the long run if you don't have the grit chip i can pretty much tell you you're going to dip your toe in business ownership and then you're going to dip right out because being a successful business owner takes resilience it takes adaptability it takes being able to pivot when necessary and to bounce back from setbacks because things are not always going to work out And that course you launched might flop. That membership may plateau. That new website that you paid thousands of dollars for may not help you get more sales. 
and that opportunity you pitched for might not come through. These things are going to happen, but that's okay. When something doesn't work out, as I said earlier, ask yourself what you can learn from it, how you can do better next time. And while this may sound easier said than done, I get it. Have your time to grief or moan or complain and then shake it out and get back into action. That is grit. That is resilience. That is what the author of the book, Grit, Angela um, Duckworth, calls stick with itness. Now, Norma Stratton is one of our US-based members, and she quoted, these aren't the exact words, but she paraphrased this quote from Einstein that says, you can't solve a problem in the same energy that it was created. Now, that's not the actual quote. I'll put the actual quote in the show notes. But another strategy for building this adaptability is to stay flexible when things are changing. And that can be so hard, right? I can be so resistant to change in one respect. And on the other respect, I'm very innovative and often, you know, the first to try something new. Karina Pelliconi of Plum Petal, a wonderful e-commerce store that sells statement jewelry to curvy women, She said when things get tough, she looks to be more creative. So she dips into her creativity and she goes to problem solving. She says, I think about how to do business better and differently, how to stand out from the rest and look at what options are for improving my business. So for her, that could mean exploring new markets or developing new products or services or finding more distributors. But for you, it can mean any of those things, but it can mean shifting your business model. If you have a business model that's not working, then how could you adapt? How could you stay resilient? Because sometimes the economy will knock us around or a market will disappear from under our feet or we'll lose that big client and we're back to zero. So you want to remember the most successful business owners are often the ones that adapt and evolve over time. So we started out as the Australian Business Women's Network. We were an association style organization and we did monthly events with canapes and a guest speaker. And we did those in Sydney and Melbourne and occasionally in Brisbane. And we were just burning ourselves out and weren't helping as many women as we could. So we took a big shift to taking the business online. And we did it before people were online. We did it when people didn't have email addresses and hardly anyone had a website. And so we had to really stick with that decision and stay resilient until the world kind of caught up. Then COVID came along and suddenly everybody knew what a Zoom call was and what a webinar call was. Uh, call was and knew how to do business online and things really shifted for us and for so many businesses that had already been using a different strategy but we had to adapt we had to stay strong in order to continue to operate effectively the fourth strategy I want to give you is connection and support and this is one of my favorite strategies because as a business owner it's really easy to feel isolated and alone and that's why it's important to build connections and to find support and this could mean joining a business network like her business or attending industry events or even just reaching out to other business owners that you already have in your community or network. Now, the more that you connect with others, the more opportunities that you'll have to learn from their experiences, to find new ideas, to get support when you need it. That's why I'm here in South Carolina, because of the connections and support that I know I find here. And even if you're an introvert like me, having people around you who get you and who can help you is so essential. In fact, there's actual research that shows that loneliness in business often leads to failure in business. So connecting with others isn't a nice to have when you feel like it or when you need something, it's actually an essential part of growing your business. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be out networking every night. I would hate to have to do that. But knowing that you have a network of a few people that you can trust and who trust you, that makes managing the tough times so much easier. And one of our members, Shalini, she said, I want to choose time to spend where I am loved. So where are you loved? Where are the people that really get you? That's where you want to find time. That's going to keep that positive attitude in those tough times. Another connection that you might want to consider, and this is one that I've used many times in my business, is to seek out a mentor. And this is someone who's been down the path that you've been and they can guide you from their experience. Or a peer accountability group. So inside of her business, we include for free for our members our peer-to-peer goals groups. Members love them because we bring women together for the purpose of connecting. We also do that with our monthly networking and brainstorming events where women get to meet each other and have a sounding board for their ideas as they brainstorm solutions to problems in their businesses. And at these events, women make connections, but they also make collaborations and they make sales. So what is it for you? Where can you find your people 
And like I said, this week I'm in the US with the mastermind I belong to. And three times a year, I know I have this in-person support. But throughout the rest of the year, I have this online support of this group through the Voxer channel that we're a part of. That's a, it's a kind of a walkie-talkie app. But the Facebook group that we started, and we're always there to tap into each other's support. So I wanted to give you those four strategies, and I'll just reiterate them to you. The first is really checking your mindset and your attitude and start with gratitude. What is really working? Then looking at how am I taking care of myself in this tough time? How am I managing this stress? And really, you want to find an outlet, right? Because you don't want to combust. (laughs) And the third thing is that adaptability and resilience and really building the grit for yourself. And if you haven't got the book Grit by Angela Duckworth, I highly recommend it. It's one of the books I bought. I've bought so many hundreds of copies of this book and given it away to clients. And then connection and support, which, as I said, is one of my favorite strategies for staying positive in tough times and really keeping that spark in your business. So I hope that was useful for you. We have created a whole day where you can get all those things that I talked about today. The theme for our Her Business Live event this year is inspired. And we're looking at, well, how do I get inspired to take the action that I might be Um, holding back on or I might be procrastinating on? How do I get inspired to try something new? How do I get inspired to try a new marketing strategy? And I'll be giving you examples and practical strategies as will the eight other wonderful, wonderful, wonderful speakers that are going to be there on the day. Plus, you get to spend the day with hundreds of women that you can connect with using one of the strategies we talked about today to get new clients, to reach more people, to find opportunities. Now, you can learn more at herbusinesslive.com. And the sooner that you head on over, the more savings you get because we have early bird savings on right now. Now, if you're a member of the Herb Business Network, watch your inbox because we have additional member savings for you. And if you're not a member, get in touch with our office and ask how you can join so that you can get those extra savings because it's so worth it. So head on over to herbusinesslive.com. I'll also put a link over in our show notes page, which is going to be at herbusiness.com forward slash 226. I want to thank you so much for listening. I will see you right here next time here at the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now. Oh, I want to let you know, if you don't already subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that'll get you more practical tips and insights on how to grow your business. We release shows very regularly. I'll catch you on the next one. I love doing this show for you and I appreciate you listening and sharing the show with your friends if you got something today. I also love to hear from you. So know that you can always email me at podcast at herbusiness.com with your thoughts, with a request, with a question, whatever you need. That's podcast at herbusiness.com. Join me next time right here on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.